everyone, happy holidays! Pushing Up Roses here, and today we're taking a look at Space Quest VI, The Spinal Frontier. This is my official Christmas review of the year, which I will explain as to why a bit later. And yes, the title is a blatant reference to Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. That wordplay alone should give you a good idea on what the humor style will be for this game. It's one giant sci-fi pop culture reference. This game is the final title in the Space Quest series, developed by Sierra and designed primarily by Josh Mandel. Congratulations, Josh. You're the designer for Space Quest 6. Oh, uh, gee, thanks. You remember Josh Mandel, right? He was the voice of King Graham. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend Cedric. Steve Dorian, and the writer of one of my favorite games of all time, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Scott Murphy, one of the original Space Quest designers, was also involved as a creative consultant, but left shortly before the game was finished. Because there was a change in designers, a few of the inventory puzzles were poorly outlined, but despite that, I have a very mushy part in my heart for this game. Hmm, part in my heart. That rhymed. I will tell you why but not now, later. You play as bumbling idiot character Roger Wilco, who is on trial for various weird things he had done in the previous game, Space Quest V. It's true, Roger did cheat on his aptitude test, which is an homage to Captain Kirk bending the rules so he can win on his Starfleet training exam. However, Starcon decides to keep him employed due to his involvement with the, quote, safe return of the SCS Eureka. Wait a second, wasn't that ship destroyed in Space Quest V? Continuity! Roger is also an accomplished janitor, the best in his field, so instead of firing him, Starcon strips him of his rank, quite literally, and he's back to that position on the SCS Deep Ship, which I understand is a parody of Star Trek's Deep Space Nine, but I personally enjoy it more as a play on words for deep shit. Hey everyone, look at me, I'm cleaning the deep shit! I don't know, it makes sense to me. While cleaning up the dining area, the crew is interrupted by a video message by Captain Kilbasa, named after... a sausage. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your fine performance during our recent episode, A Stitch in Time Saves Gamma 9. He informs everyone that as a reward for doing so well in A Glitch in Time Saves Gamma 9, and why yes, that's another Star Trek reference, they would be taking shore leave on planet Polysorbate 60. What is polysorbate 60, you might ask? Well, it's a food additive found in some pudding mixes. We here at the Pushing Up Roses show like to further your education with extremely useless trivia. You'll thank me after it helps you out on who wants to be a millionaire one day. Roger's adventures start after you are teleported down to polysorbate. Okay, I'm ready. Energize. From there, you're just gonna have to, well, keep yourself occupied. Polysorbate 60 was definitely my favorite area to explore as a kid. Probably because I was stuck there for so long, I thought that's where the entire game took place. It's really dingy and run down. One could say it's really a pile. Heh, <laughs> pile. That's a reference to poop. The character design cracks me up though. Look at this guy! Look at him! He's weird! Obviously peacocking. Impressed by his own perceived magnificence, this wannabe babe magnet stands and just radiates cool. Okay, here's the lowdown on the plot. You are being targeted by someone named Sharpay who wants Roger's body for something. No, it's not sex, it's more like this crazy scheme that involves immortality, and for whatever reason, she wants Roger's body. Probably because she feels like he's fairly disposable, just being a janitor and such. Hmm, Sharpay, that's an interesting name. I think she was named after the dog breed. Now, why would she be named after such a wrinkly- Oh my god, moisturizer! <laughs> this diabolical plan Sharpay has comes to light when she sends a couple of henchmen to retrieve Roger, one whose name is Nigel Rancid. Rancid, huh? Black coat, white shoes, black hat, Cadillac. Yeah, the boy's a time bomb. She then attempts to gas Roger so she can take his body for experimentation, but Roger's love interest, Stellar Santiago, comes to save him and ends up being the one taken. And yes, Stellar is somehow, somehow genuinely attracted to Roger Wilco. She has some Klingon characteristics, but when I played this as a little kid, before I ever knew what Star Trek was, I thought her forehead was just extra wrinkly, like Gordon Ramsay levels of forehead wrinkles. That is no joke. As Roger Wilco, it is up to you to save Stellar Santiago from the clutches of Sharpay, who wants to use her body as a vessel in order to live forever. You go on all kinds of adventures during this journey, including farting around on Polysorbate 60, navigating the information superhighway, which apparently looks a lot like Windows 3.1, Mmm, feel the nostalgia. Feel it! 
And ah, yes, getting shrunk down into the size of a nanobite and shot into Stellar's bloodstream so you can explore her body. This is beyond getting to know someone in the biblical sense. I am quite literally collecting bile from her liver. It's basically like a more adult episode of the Magic School Bus. The Magic School Bus explores the bowels! Check it out, Wanda! We're getting close to Stellar's butthole! Holy crap, Stellar has a questionable diet. How do you swallow a half-eaten Twinkie? And why is there a staple and a paperclip in her stomach? Whole M&Ms and a feather? Those are not good yumblies. The puzzles for this game can be infuriating. Some of them are enjoyable, or at least fulfilling once you figure them out, but because of the change in designers that I mentioned earlier, some of them got borked. For example, at one point, Roger needs to configure a data quarter to use it as a homing beacon device. Originally, there was supposed to be a comic book you find in the game that gives you hints for configuring it, but it was taken out of the final version. Instead, the hints went into the manual, and people thought it was a form of copy protection, but it technically was not. Either way, if you don't have the manual, you will not figure out this data quarter puzzle. A lot of people in the gaming community have very polarized opinions on Space Quest VI. It did have a very different sense of humor than its predecessors, and also a different aesthetic with the inclusion of both cartoony and 3D artwork, but I gotta say, it's my favorite. I think it's stunning looking, everything from the different settings to the character animations, even Wilco's own walk cycle has its own dopey personality. The game is extremely detailed, with hilarious dialogue trees and descriptions for everything in the game, including accurate commentary on human anatomy. These are the trachea and bronchi. That's where the lungs hook in. Making things even better is the voice of the narrator, Gary Owens. He has a pretty impressive list of voice acting credits, including Roger Ramjet and the original voice of Space Ghost, and I can basically listen to him narrate anything. You'd think, if indeed you did, that a guy with the skin quality of a pachyderm wouldn't have a problem with this climate. He has the quintessential smug douchebag voice that makes every line sound condescending yet hilarious at the same time. Definitely one of the main highlights of the game. I mean, who doesn't want to hear this guy talk about gallstones? The gallstone is wedged in the bile duct, and that's just a fine place for it. Roger's voice is okay, I suppose, though sometimes I can't place his tone. Bite me, Commander. Oh yes, Commander Kilbasa, bite me. Show me your sausage. Seriously, was that supposed to sound seductive? Because that's how I perceived it. Uh, can't you guys take a joke? The game definitely has its own special brand of juvenile and sometimes gross humor. Can't say I've ever wanted to see a pixelated personal grooming device, but at least it wasn't drawn by the artists of Ren and Stimpy. Can you just see that now? It'd be a major close-up with like boogers and lice in it or something. And now I would like to tell you a story. It's time for another childhood memory with Pushing Up Roses. There's a reason why Space Quest VI is my favorite in the series, even if it's not the best by critical and technical standards. Back in 1999, my dad was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. We didn't think he would make it to Thanksgiving, but he did. He made it through Christmas and into the new year. I was given the Space Quest collection for Christmas and I was stoked! I installed it Christmas Day and tried out every game. The game I played the most though was Space Quest VI, just entranced by the voice acting and goofy writing. My dad's health was deteriorating at this time and it was extremely painful to watch and go through, so at night I would stay up and play Space Quest VI for some laughs with my blue lava lamp on and my radio playing this cassette tape I had of the car's greatest hits. Even today when I hear Touch and Go or Heartbeat City on the radio, I think about playing Space Quest in my old room, my dad, and that weird radioactive looking lava lamp. It was the last game I played before my dad passed away on January 22nd, and when I play it, I'm filled with memories of Christmas, pain laughter, the cars, the bleak winter season, and the last moments I got to spend with him. I can even remember how my room was laid out at the time. It sounds strange to want to revisit such a sad time in my life, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I long for those memories, even though they are not the best. Playing Space Quest VI brings me back to that time, my teenage years before everything changed, so it actually became one of my favorite games simply due to these sentiments. Even if I hadn't had these profound connections to this game, I probably still would have liked it. I like all the goofy Star Trek references, the adult humor, the music, and the overall tone and feel of the game. Anything Josh Mandel is involved in is bound to be clever, and this game is no exception. It's one of the only games in which I will listen to Gary Owens narrate every single line without skipping through it. Oh mama, I'm guessing one too many burritos for the last guy in here. And no, Gary Owens was not the narrator of George of the Jungle, that was Keith Scott, so quit asking. Hmm, Brendan Fraser. Hello. Gary Owens was meant to narrate the next game being created by the two guys from Andromeda, the creators of the original Space Quest games, but sadly he passed away before that could come to fruition. 
Space Quest 6 was unfortunately the last official Space Quest game in the series, leaving behind so many questions. First of all, what will become of Stellar Santiago and Roger's budding relationship? What about Roger's future wife, Beatrice Wankmeister from Space Quest 5? Whatever happened to Drunk E.T.? Did Stellar start chewing her food? Why is The Undertaker from Gabriel Knight here? Did he quit his job at St. Louis Cemetery Number 1? What's going on with Gabriel Knight? Does he still live in New Orleans? Should I take a vacation to New Orleans? Should I drive there? Should I take a plane? What kind of pop should I get on the plane? Is it pop or is it soda? Like I said, so many unanswered questions. There does exist a fan game that continues the story called Incinerations, but I really wish there would have been an official Space Quest 7 developed by Sierra. Unfortunately, 1995 was a dicey time for adventure games and sales were on the decline, so I understand why they didn't make more. I still have my memories though, and now that adventure games are back in the spotlight and are being sold on sites like GOG and Steam, more people can play them and enjoy them and create their own memories. Happy Holidays, and thank you for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review on Space Quest VI The Spinal Frontier. I hope you'll give the game a shot, and if you want to see another Space Quest review, you'll find one in the annotations for the first game in the series. Yes, I skipped a few games and went right to six. Sorry. If you want to talk about Magic School Bus episodes with me, try my social networks, and if you're feeling generous, I also have a Patreon campaign with extra perks. For example, I recently had a conversation with my patrons about bile. Doesn't that sound great? Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.